The sun sank below the horizon as I parked my SUV at a secluded campsite in Alaska. The vast wilderness spread out, its darkening expanse only broken by the occasional silhouette of towering trees. I picked this spot for its isolation, craving a break from the noise of everyday life. With the engine off and the radio silent, the stillness was almost eerie. After setting up my tent and unloading my supplies, I started a small fire to fend off the night's chill. The flames danced and cast shadows among the trees, and the quiet around me grew more intense. I sat close to the fire, eating a simple dinner and shining my flashlight into the darkness. The first hour passed without anything strange happening, but then I heard it, a faint rustling sound coming from the edge of the woods. I turned off the flashlight, trying to listen better. The noise stopped, and I told myself it was just an animal or the wind. I tried to shake off the creeping feeling of unease and went back to eating. Suddenly, the rustling came back, louder and closer this time. I shone my flashlight into the forest, but all I saw was darkness. I grabbed a strong stick from near the fire, my heart racing. The rustling stopped again, and the silence felt heavy and tense. An hour later, as the fire burned low, the rustling returned with a relentless intensity. I could hear it moving steadily through the bushes, coming closer to my campsite. Fear surged through me. I quickly packed up my essentials, deciding I had to get back to my SUV. I moved as quietly as I could, trying not to make any noise. Just as I was about to reach the SUV, a shadow moved in the beam of my flashlight. I froze, my breath caught in my throat. In the dim light, I saw a large, dark shape, a moose, its huge antlers making it look even more menacing in the shadowy forest. It was the source of the noise, searching for food nearby. I felt a wave of relief as I carefully got into the SUV and locked the doors. The moose wandered off, leaving the campsite in peace. I drove away, deciding to spend the night at a nearby lodge instead. The next morning, I came back to pack up my gear. The campsite was undisturbed, and the moose had gone. As I loaded my stuff into the SUV, I noticed something unsettling. The trees around the campsite had deep, claw-like scratches running up their trunks, and the underbrush was flattened in a way that suggested something had been moving through it recently, something much bigger and more dangerous than a moose. I drove away with a shiver running down my spine, wondering what else might be lurking in the dark, wild woods. The experience left me with a chilling realization, sometimes, what you hear in the woods isn't just the wind or animals but something far more sinister. The scratches on the trees were a grim reminder that the wilderness is unpredictable, and not all dangers are easily explained. I had always wanted to go camping in the woods, so when my friend invited me to join him for a weekend trip, I agreed without hesitation. He said he knew a great spot in South Carolina, at Sesquicentennial State Park. He said it was one of the best states for camping, with plenty of trails, wildlife, and scenery to enjoy. We arrived at the park on a Friday afternoon, and set up our tent at a campsite near the lake. The park was huge, covering over 1,400 acres of land. There were other campers around, but not too many. We had enough privacy and space to feel like we were in the wilderness. The campsite was clean and well-maintained, with access to water, toilets, and fire pits. We unpacked our gear, made a fire, and cooked some hot dogs and marshmallows. It was a perfect evening, and we talked and laughed until the stars came out. The next day, we decided to explore the park and do some hiking. We packed some snacks, water, and a map, and headed to the nearest trailhead. The park had over 12 miles of trails, ranging from easy to moderate. We chose a loop trail that circled the lake, and promised to offer some scenic views. The trail was well marked and easy to follow, and we enjoyed the fresh air and the sounds of nature. We saw some birds, squirrels, and deer along the way, but nothing too exciting. We stopped at a picnic area by the lake, and ate our lunch. The lake was calm and clear, reflecting the blue sky and the green trees. It was a beautiful sight, 
and we took some pictures to remember it. We continued our hike, and soon reached the other side of the lake. The trail became more wooded and secluded, and we didn't see any other hikers. We felt like we had the park to ourselves, and we liked it. We joked and sang songs, and had a good time. We didn't notice how late it was getting, until we saw the sun starting to set behind the trees. We checked our map, and realized we still had a few miles to go before we reached our campsite. We quickened our pace, hoping to make it back before dark. We were almost there, when we heard a loud noise in the bushes. It sounded like something big and heavy, crashing through the branches. We stopped and looked around, trying to see what it was. We hoped it was just a deer, or maybe a bear. We had heard that there were some black bears in the park, but they were usually shy and harmless. We didn't see anything, but we heard it again, closer this time. It sounded like it was coming towards us fast. We panicked and ran. We didn't know what else to do. We ran as fast as we could, following the trail, hoping to reach our campsite, or any sign of civilization. We heard it behind us, getting closer and closer. We didn't dare to look back, but we could feel its presence, its breath, its growl. We screamed, but no one heard us. We were alone, and we were prey. We ran until we couldn't run anymore. We tripped and fell, and rolled down a slope. We landed on the ground, bruised and bleeding. We looked up and saw it. It was a wolf, but not like any wolf we had ever seen. It was huge, bigger than a bear, with black fur and red eyes. It had long, sharp teeth and claws, and a scarred face. It looked like a monster, a nightmare, a beast. It looked at us, and we looked at it. We knew we were going to die. It lunged at us, and we closed our eyes. We waited for the pain, the blood, the end. But it never came. Instead, we heard a gunshot and a thud. We opened our eyes and saw the wolf lying on the ground, motionless. A bullet hole in its head. We looked around and saw a man standing over us, holding a rifle. He was wearing a park ranger uniform and had a badge on his chest. He looked at us and smiled. Are you guys okay? He asked. You're lucky I was patrolling this area. That thing has been killing campers for weeks. I've been trying to track it down, but it's been too smart and too fast. Until now. I finally got it. It's over. You're safe. We couldn't believe it. We were alive. We were saved. We thanked the ranger and hugged him. He helped us up and led us to his truck. He drove us to our campsite and checked our wounds. He said we were fine, just some cuts and bruises. He said he would report the incident. He said we should pack our stuff and leave the park as soon as possible. We agreed. We packed our stuff and left the park. We never went camping again. The sun sank behind the jagged mountains of Alaska, casting long shadows over the dense forest around my SUV. I'd planned this weekend to escape the everyday grind and enjoy some peace in nature. I parked my SUV at a quiet spot beside a small, out-of-the-way lake and set up my tent nearby. The calmness of the wilderness was amazing. As night fell, the air turned crisp and cold, and the sky was filled with stars. I sat by the fire, the warm glow from the flames providing some comfort. The forest was eerily quiet, except for the occasional rustle of leaves and the distant hoot of an owl. I tried to push away the uneasy feeling creeping up my spine, convincing myself it was just the solitude. Around midnight, I heard a faint noise from the woods. It sounded like footsteps crunching slowly through the underbrush. My heart raced. I grabbed a flashlight and swept it through the darkness, but the light only reached a few feet ahead. The footsteps stopped, leaving behind a creepy silence. I rushed back to my SUV, locked the doors, and kept the flashlight on. I couldn't shake the feeling that someone, or something, was watching me. Every shadow and noise seemed to heighten my fear. Hours passed with no more sounds from the woods. Exhausted, I finally fell into a restless sleep with the night feeling like it would never end. 
morning came with the first light of dawn. I got out of my tent, hoping it had all been a bad dream. As I packed up, I noticed something unsettling, fresh tracks around my SUV, leading from the edge of the forest to where I'd been camping. They were too big to be from a deer and looked like someone had been walking in circles around my vehicle. In a hurry, I packed up the last of my things and got into the SUV. I needed to leave immediately, my sense of adventure replaced by an urgent desire to get back to safety. As I drove away, I glanced back at the forest. The trees stood silent and still, as if watching me leave. When I got home, I realized how strange and frightening the experience was. I later found out that the area I had camped in had been the site of several missing person cases. It made me wonder if those footsteps I heard were not just some random noise but someone, or something, searching for me in the dark. The tracks around my SUV were never explained, and the thought of what could have happened if I'd stayed another night gave me chills. The forest had its secrets, and some of them should never be uncovered. I should have known better. Walking alone in a strange forest wasn't the smartest thing to do, but I needed a break from the city noise. The day was perfect, cool air and just enough sunlight filtering through the trees to light up the path in front of me. I felt a rush of excitement as I breathed in the fresh smell of the woods, the sound of my boots crunching the fallen leaves underfoot. It felt good to be away from everything. The path was narrow but easy to follow. I kept going deeper into the woods, feeling my stress fade away with each step. But after what seemed like an hour, I noticed something strange. The path I was on started to fade away until it almost vanished completely. I looked around, hoping to see some signs or anything familiar, but there was nothing. The trees around me were growing taller, and the bushes thicker, making me feel like the forest was closing in on me. I kept walking, thinking I could find my way back but things only got worse. My heart started to race as I realized I was lost. The forest around me all looked the same, just endless trees and bushes, no clear way out. I pulled out my phone to check the GPS, but there was no signal. The battery was dying, and I had no clue how far I had gone. As the afternoon started turning into evening, the light began to dim. The temperature dropped, and the forest, once peaceful, now felt dark and threatening. The trees around me seemed to lean in closer, their branches twisting in creepy ways. I tried to retrace my steps, but everything felt wrong. Panic set in. Every rustle of leaves or snap of a twig made me jump. It felt like someone, or something, was watching me, though I knew it was probably just my mind playing tricks on me. After what felt like hours of wandering aimlessly, I was completely exhausted, both in body and mind. I sat down on a fallen tree, trying to calm down, but my thoughts were racing. How did I end up like this? I cursed myself for being so careless. I knew I had to keep moving, but my body felt weak and drained. I forced myself to get up and kept walking, determined to find a way out. Just when I was ready to give up, I saw a faint light in the distance. My heart skipped a beat. I stumbled toward it, my legs feeling like they could give out at any moment, pushing through the thick bushes. The light got brighter as I got closer, and finally, I stepped into a small clearing. In the middle of the clearing stood a small, old cabin. It looked run down, but the light inside was warm and inviting. Relief washed over me. I didn't care who lived there or what I might find, I just needed help. I walked up to the door and knocked, hoping someone would open it. A moment later, an old man opened the door. He looked at me with concern, his face full of wrinkles but somehow comforting. Without saying a word, he motioned for me to come inside. The warmth of the cabin hit me as soon as I stepped in, and I nearly collapsed from the relief. The man handed me a blanket and pointed to a chair near the fire. As I sat there, warming up, I felt the tension in my body start to melt away. The man brought me a cup of hot tea, and I sipped it slowly feeling the warmth spread through me. He didn't ask me anything, just let me sit there quietly, which I appreciated. After a while, I finally spoke up, explaining how I had gotten lost. 
The man nodded, like he had heard it all before. He told me there was an old, barely used trail nearby that could lead me out of the forest and back to the main road. He offered to show me the way in the morning. That night, I slept in the cabin, comforted by the fire and the thought that I was safe. But my sleep was uneasy. I kept waking up to the sound of something moving outside the cabin, soft footsteps that stopped whenever I tried to listen closely. At one point I thought I saw a shadow pass by the window, but when I got up to look, there was nothing there. Morning couldn't come fast enough. When it did, the old man kept his word and led me through the forest. The trail was hard to see, overgrown with weeds, but he seemed to know it well. It took a few hours, but eventually, I saw the road ahead and my car parked just off to the side. I turned to thank the man, but he just gave me a tired smile and waved before disappearing back into the woods. As I got into my car and started driving away, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I glanced in the rearview mirror, expecting to see the old man heading back to his cabin, but instead I saw nothing, no sign of him or the cabin. My heart started pounding. I slammed on the brakes and jumped out of the car, running back to where I thought the cabin should be. But when I reached the spot, there was nothing there, just trees and bushes, no clearing, no cabin. I stood there, stunned, trying to make sense of it. I drove home in a daze, trying to convince myself that I had just imagined things, that my mind was playing tricks on me after such a stressful night. But deep down, I knew what I saw, or didn't see. I've stayed out of the woods since then, but that night still haunts me. Because every now and then, when I'm alone in my room, I can still hear those soft footsteps outside my window, just like I did that night. And each time, I wonder if that cabin really existed, or if something else was leading me out of those woods that morning. Something that's still out there, watching. I was deep in the forest, far from town. I had been walking all day, enjoying the fresh air and the quiet around me. The sun was high when I started, but as the day went on, the trees stretched their shadows longer, and the light started to fade. I hadn't planned on being out this late, but I lost track of time. The path I had been following was thin and crowded with plants. It twisted and turned so much that I soon didn't know which way to go to get back. My phone had no signal, and the small map I had with me was useless in this thick forest. My heart began to pound as it hit me that I was lost. The further I went, the darker it got. The tall trees above me blocked out most of the leftover sunlight. The forest was strangely quiet, except for the occasional rustle of leaves or the snap of a twig under my feet. Every sound felt louder, more intense. I couldn't shake the feeling that someone or something, was watching me, but I forced myself to keep moving, hoping I would find something familiar or a break in the trees that would lead me out. Time passed, and the darkness became almost complete. The forest seemed alive, closing in on me. The ground was rough, and I tripped more than once on roots and fallen branches. My legs ached, my mouth was dry, but I couldn't stop. I had to keep going. Just when the panic was about to take over, I saw a faint light through the trees. It was weak, flickering like a far-off campfire, but it was enough to give me hope. I moved towards it, the light growing stronger with each step. Soon, I came into a small open area. In the middle of the clearing was an old, abandoned cabin. The light was coming from inside, glowing faintly through the dirty windows. I hesitated, my mind racing with thoughts of who, or what, might be inside. But I was so tired, and the thought of shelter was too tempting. I walked up to the cabin, the leaves crunching loudly under my boots. The door was slightly open, creaking as I pushed it wider. Inside, the cabin was empty. The light I had seen was a small oil lamp, left burning on a wooden table. The room was simple, with a few old pieces of furniture covered in dust. There were no signs that anyone had been here recently but the lamp had clearly been lit not long ago. My fear faded, replaced by relief. Whoever had been here was gone, and the cabin felt strangely comforting. I sat down on the dusty bed, 
my body heavy with exhaustion. The fear I had felt in the forest seemed far away now, as if the cabin's walls were keeping me safe from whatever was out there. I lay back, the weight of the day pulling me down, and before I knew it, I had fallen into a deep sleep. When I woke up, sunlight was streaming through the windows. The lamp had gone out, leaving only a faint smell of oil in the air. I stepped outside and was greeted by a clear, crisp morning. The forest, which had seemed so scary in the dark, now looked calm and peaceful. I felt a wave of relief wash over me. I noticed a narrow path leading away from the clearing, one I hadn't seen in the dark. I followed it, and within an hour, I found myself back on a trail I recognized. The cabin, the fear, the darkness, it all felt like a bad dream. As I made my way back to town, I couldn't help but feel thankful. I had been lost, but I found my way out, and the forest had given me the shelter I needed. Yet, as I walked, something nagged at the back of my mind. I couldn't shake the thought of that cabin, standing alone in the middle of nowhere. Who had lit that lamp? Why had they left it burning in an empty cabin? I tried to push the thoughts away, telling myself it didn't matter. I was safe now. But as I glanced back at the forest, a shiver ran down my spine. For just a moment, I thought I saw a figure standing at the edge of the trees, watching me. My heart skipped a beat, but when I looked again, there was nothing there, just the shadows of the trees swaying in the wind. I told myself it was just my imagination, a trick of the light, but a part of me knew something was off. As I reached the edge of town, I realized I couldn't remember exactly how I had gotten out of the forest. The path I had followed seemed to blur in my memory, as if the forest itself had guided me out. I shook my head, trying to clear the uneasy feeling that had settled in my chest. I told myself it was over, that I was safe, but deep down, I couldn't help but feel that I had left something behind in that forest, something that wasn't done with me yet. And as I finally stepped into the safety of my home, I couldn't shake the feeling that the forest, with its dark secrets, was somehow still watching me, waiting for me to return. I've always liked the quiet of the forest, how the trees seem to wrap around you, blocking out everything else. But that evening, something felt different. The air was thick and damp, and the shadows seemed darker and longer than usual. I decided to take a walk, hoping the fresh air would help me relax after a long, tough day. As I went deeper into the woods, the sun started to set, painting the sky with an odd orange light that filtered through the trees. The path I usually followed seemed unfamiliar. The trees, which normally felt like old friends, now seemed unfriendly, their twisted branches like hands reaching out to grab me. I told myself I was just being silly, that it was all in my head. But the further I walked, the more lost I felt. The path twisted and turned in ways that didn't make sense. The ground beneath me was soft and uneven, and I tripped more than once. It was strange. This was the same forest I'd walked in so many times before, but now it felt like a completely different place. Suddenly, I heard something, a rustling in the bushes, followed by the sharp snap of a branch. My heart started racing as I looked around, trying to see through the thick mist that had settled in. I tried to tell myself it was just a deer or a fox, but the sound didn't fit. It was too steady, too careful. It wasn't the panicked movement of a scared animal. It was something moving towards me. I started to walk faster, trying to shake the feeling that I was being watched. But no matter how quickly I moved, the sound seemed to stay right behind me, just out of sight. The trees felt like they were closing in on me, the mist getting thicker, making it harder to see. My breathing became shallow, my steps hurried and shaky. I tripped again and fell hard onto my knees. When I looked up, I realized I was no longer on the path at all. I was surrounded by thick bushes and trees that seemed taller, more threatening. Panic hit me as I realized I didn't know which way to go. The sounds around me grew louder, closer. I forced myself to get up, ignoring the pain in my leg. I needed to get out of there. I picked a direction and started moving, pushing through the thick undergrowth, my clothes catching on branches, 
the mist sticking to my skin like a cold sweat. My mind was racing with thoughts of being lost, of spending the night in this dark, eerie forest. I couldn't let that happen. As I kept going, the forest began to change. The trees started to thin out, and the ground became firmer under my feet. The sounds that had been following me started to fade, replaced by the distant sound of running water. I followed the sound, hoping it would lead me out of the woods. After what felt like hours, I finally broke free from the trees and found myself in a small clearing. A narrow stream ran through the middle of it, the water clear and cold. I knelt by the stream, splashing water on my face, trying to calm down. The mist was lifting, and the last light of the day was casting a pale glow over the clearing. I followed the stream, feeling more steady now, but still shaken. The fear that had gripped me was slowly fading, but it wasn't gone. I knew that if I followed the water, it would eventually lead me to the edge of the forest, back to safety. Finally, after what seemed like another half hour of walking, I saw the edge of the forest ahead. Beyond the trees was a familiar field, and in the distance, I could just make out the outline of my house. Relief washed over me as I stepped out of the forest, leaving the darkness behind. When I got home, I turned back to look at the forest. It stood there, quiet and still, the mist now just a light haze. It was hard to believe that just a short time ago, it had felt so threatening. I wanted to put it behind me, but something didn't feel right. As I stood there, catching my breath, I noticed something that sent a chill down my spine. In the distance, at the edge of the trees, something moved. It was just a shadow, barely visible in the dim light, but it was there. And then, just as quickly, it disappeared back into the darkness. I stared at the spot where it had been, my heart pounding. The forest had gone quiet again, almost too quiet, and I realized that whatever had been following me, whatever had been watching me in those woods, it was still out there. And somehow, I knew it would always be out there, waiting. I closed the door behind me, locking it tight, but the uneasy feeling stayed with me. That night, as I lay in bed, I couldn't shake the sense that something was still watching, just beyond the trees. The sky was a dull orange when I started my solo hike. The forest stretched out in front of me, looking like an endless sea of green. I picked this trail because it promised peace and a chance to get away from the constant noise of my daily life. As the sun sank lower, the light barely filtered through the thick tree canopy, making spooky shadows dance on the ground. It was quiet, but that kind of quiet that made my skin crawl. As I moved deeper into the woods, the path got narrower, and the trees seemed to crowd in closer. Their twisted branches looked like skeletal hands reaching out. I kept my eyes on the path, listening to the crunch of leaves under my boots and the occasional call of a distant bird. The further I walked, the more I felt like I was being watched. I tried to shake off the feeling, telling myself it was just my imagination. An hour into the hike, the trail took a sharp turn and led me into an unusually quiet part of the forest. The normal sounds of rustling leaves and chirping insects were gone. My footsteps echoed in the silence, and I began to feel a chill. Suddenly, I spotted something unusual, a set of fresh, muddy footprints next to the trail. They were too big to be mine and too recent to be from another hiker. A cold sweat broke out on my forehead as I quickened my pace, feeling the weight of the silence around me. I kept glancing over my shoulder, but the forest remained eerily still. The path ahead seemed to go on forever, each step feeling heavier and more daunting. Just as panic started to set in, I came across a small clearing with an old wooden sign that read, Camp Area 5 Miles Ahead. I felt a wave of relief. The sign meant I was on the right track and that there was a safe spot not too far away. My phone buzzed with a notification and I checked to see a map showing the closest exit from the trail. With renewed determination, I followed the trail markers, which began to appear more often. The sound of my breathing grew louder as I made my way out of the dense trees and into a small clearing with a few cars parked around. I had made it back to the trailhead safely, or so I thought. As I drove away, 
I glanced back at the forest, a mix of relief and unease settling in. The hike had been nerve-wracking, but what truly unsettled me was the discovery I made later that night. While reviewing the photos I had taken, I noticed something strange in the background of one shot. It was a figure, partially hidden behind a tree, watching me. Its presence was barely noticeable in the daylight, but in the photo, it was clear someone had been following me. I shuddered, realizing that whatever had been watching me had not been just my imagination.